CataractCoach.com. Hey, Cataract Coach, why the baby Rexes? You always say to avoid making a baby Rexes. So what happened? I'm looking at that Rexes. It looks kind of small. Well, watch this case carefully. Here's the side port. What do you notice about the corneal white to white? Look again. We'll put some anesthetic in the eye and we'll put some viscoelastic in the eye. But we'll put the fixation ring down. The fixation ring has a diameter of 13.6 millimeters. 13.6. So again, here's the viscoelastic. And look, you need a whole syringe of viscoelastic, the entire syringe to fill it up. Yup. Of course, the patient's going to move a little bit. Don't worry about that. We're used to patients who dance. Now, look at this. As we put the fixation ring down, let's see. It's a very large eye. So again, we'll have the patient try to look down a little bit to get the fixation ring. Maybe not on the fixation ring. But you can see this patient has a very large white to white. So you can't just say, okay, let me just wing it and do a Rex is the way I feel. No, no, you've got to measure it. Because despite this patient having a very large corneal diameter, a very large anterior segment, look how tiny the incision looks, right? Think about it. It looks a little bit off, right? Well, it's a normal incision. It's the same keratome we always use. But the catch here is it's a very, very large myopic eye here. That's the catch here. So this is a large myopic eye. You're going to start off here. Now, look, I'm going to measure. Those are the forceps. So I already know what's the center, what's the diameter, what's the radius. Again, measuring again. Because an eye like this, which is such a big eye, I need to measure it again and again to make sure I'm making the correct size rectus. And you think, no, it looks too small, right? No, I promise you, I'm, we're measuring it, right? Think about it. So finishing the rexus, again, getting this going around nice and easy. And if you just winged it and did it, well, I'll just do it about this, but you would have made way too big of a rexus. That, I think, is a perfect rexus. Look at that, pal. By the way, we're showing this case in real time. Start to finish. It's a complete cataract case. The whole case just for you. Now, this patient had prior LASIK, so we're taking that into account. And let's see, it's a younger patient, also had a prior vitrectomy. There's some hydro dissection. Let's see the fluid wave pass behind. Very nice, very nice. And there's the whole nucleus. Look at that thing. So you can see the central nuclear opalescence, which is what caused a very large myopic shift in this patient. And so we're going to go in here. Our goal here is to put a monofocal torque lens in the capsule bag with a goal of emetropia or plano for this patient. Now, going in here with the phaco probe, again, look how tiny the instruments look, right? The phaco probe in the eye looks so small. Well, that's normal. It's just a very, very large eye. So we can go in here, and this nucleus is fortunately relatively soft. We can aspirate it down pretty easily. We're going to kind of take our time here. Now, I'm going to be extra cautious in this eye. It's a very long axial length. The patient, again, had prior LASIK. So the cornea is actually unusually flat, somewhere in the mid to high 30 diopter range. And so we're going to take this piece of this whole nucleus out bit by bit, very easily. The goal here is control. I don't care what the time is. I'm not here to race the clock. I'm here to give a beautiful outcome. That's why we spent so much time measuring that Rex is make it pretty. And now take out that nucleus. There it goes. Beautiful. Aspirate, aspirate, aspirate. Again, not very dense. Just had that central nuclear opalescence. And now let's come on out. Now, let me tell you about retina rounds. For a big myopic guy like this, you better be checking that retina. Make sure that retina is nice and healthy. And on retinarounds.com, there's a video of how to check and do a good dilated, depressed retinal periphery exam. And guess who the patient is? Yeah, it's me. So you can go see me and you can check out my retinas, make sure I'm okay. I promise everything looked good in my retinas. Now, and I know they're good because I had Dr. Pradeep Prasad check my retinas and I know he's good. So now going in right here, moving the cortex. And again, I'll show you at the end of the case. This is not a baby rexus. This is a perfect rexus. This is exactly the size rexus that I wanted. We measured it many times. So it kind of hammers home the point that in all the cases we're doing here, eyes are all different. You need to be measuring that rexus. Right? Think about a smaller eye with an 11 millimeter white to white and poor dilation. You just can't go by the pupil size to determine like how much of a rexus should you do, what size rex. No, you need to actually measure it out, which is why I designed those forceps 20 plus years ago, by the way, with marks on the tip. So that as you make the rexus, you could actually measure and say, hey, this is a correct five millimeter rexus. Now here, we aim for a little bit more, maybe five and a half, and we'll find that out. Here comes the viscal. That's a cohesive agent filling up the capsule bag here. I think we need to do a little capsule polishing. Look at that little hazy stuff on the underside of the anterior capsule rim. Going in here with the polisher. Yeah, clean all that off. Does it make a difference? I don't know, but it makes me happy, right? It's funny. Studies have showed one way or the other. Sometimes they're contradictory, but you got to do your best surgical judgment. I just know if it was my eye, could you make it pretty and clean? That's what I want. Now, here comes the lens. The moment of truth, if you will. 
Here comes a single piece of acrylic glass. Now, why is the AC kind of soft? Well, think about this. You ran out of this cold elastic. Remember, you needed the full, dis full syringe of the dispersive to fill the eye at the beginning of the case. Well, we needed the full syringe of cohesive, and we used part of it actually for the injector. So I could have opened another cohesive visco elastic, but I don't think that was necessary. So here comes the lens, and look at that. There's a six millimeter optic, and you can see, you can already see the Rexes. Boom, pow, on the money, 5.5. We like it now. Of course, the patient won't uh, won't uh, look at the light, but we'll fix that. We're good. Here we go with the eye probe going inside the eye, nice and gentle, going behind the optic, remove visco elastic again. I hope it's helpful for younger surgeons to see these complete cataract cases. Again, this is a complete case start to finish of me operating. There are no edits in this thing. You're seeing the whole case. I think our advanced surgeons are watching this at 2x speed, so they're hearing my voice in a very funny manner. But for the other surgeons, if you've done less than 1,000 cases, you should be definitely be watching this at normal speed. And now look, there's the Rexus. Look at that. Bam! Five and a half Rexus overlapping the optic 360 all around. And beautiful centration of the Rexus too. Let's hydrate up the main incision, seal that up. Let's get that lens final position here. Maybe remove any extra, extra visco elastic stuck in the angle. Let's see, go in here with the BSS. What are we gonna do next? Yeah, I'm watching, watching, watching. Here we go, going to the BSS, get that lens positioned. There are the toric marks. There are already marks, if you look carefully, on the corneal epithelium, so we're lining those up. This patient has, with the rule of stigmatism, so steep at about the 90-degree meridian. And again, look at that erexus. Look at that. It's overlapping beautifully. Now, you know there's going to be some capsule contraction in the post-op period. So as the capsule contracts a little bit, the rex will become a little bit smaller. But that's a for sure full 360 overlap. Yeah, it's pushing the envelope a little bit. But we're playing the big leagues here. We're not here to deliver like, you know, novice game. I want true expert game here. And if this was my eye, I would be thrilled. Here's an angle sweep to get that last visco elastic out of the eye. Final positioning of that torque lens. Look at that. Beautiful. Exactly what we wanted. And so, yeah, it was not a baby Rexus. Believe me, I heed my own advice. I also believe, just like you, no baby Rexus. Yeah, every, every time you're making that small Rexus, this thing, Catara coaches say what? No baby Rexus. And you know the other fun things too, right? If it does not spin, you will not win. Visco is cheaper than Vitreous. We got some fun things. I'm glad you guys follow these videos and, and play along. And I trust that you've learned something valuable, especially in this case where now we know, especially in eyes of unusual sizes, either extremely small or extremely large, you have to measure the Rexus. You just can't wing it. You can't guess it. If you measure it exactly what you thought was a baby Rexus from the title pick, look at that. It's actually... Spot on, just like we want it. At the end of the case here, everything looks fantastic. Hey, thanks for watching. Remember, at cataractcoach.com, you can submit your video as well. But make sure you follow those directions on that website.